Judy Latabo here from the Quilting Bee in Maslin, Ohio. And we will be working on block nine of the Riley Blake Design Challenge. And this one is called Star Blossom. So I hope you've printed it out and are ready to go. The first thing I always have to do is, all right, since I'm doing scrappy, which of my scraps am I going to use? And these are my choices for today's, for this week's. And so I've labeled them so I don't forget what I'm planning on putting where. Um, A, B, and C, of course, is the white, just as they show. My common denominator which is what I keep calling it, <clears throat> is going to be those outer four spokes as well as the very center. That will be G and F. And then my two contrasting or uh, companion fabrics are these two teals. I looked at my board and I don't have a lot of teal that I'm working with, so I pulled these two. And then this sort of goldenrod will be there in the center, uh, touching the white spokes. So that's that's what I'm going to work with. And as I will remember, as Cindy had suggested, to for the half square triangles that have the white, I will press toward the white as opposed to the dark as we normally do and the half square triangles that are incorporating my goldenrod, which will be with, let me see, that goes with D. So these two will, will make up a half square triangle. So I will press toward my D, or my H, I'm sorry, toward my goldenrod little tips that she does give us that's, that makes the matching down the road a lot easier. So um, that's what we have. I am going to get these cut out and do my half square triangles. You know, there's no big secret to how to do those. Just cut true to the size and true to your corner to corner line and I'll uh, be back with it laid out to see how we think these fabrics all work together. So see you in a little bit. It's me again. I happened to re think about as I was working on the project on our week nine uh, challenge that I had failed to mention one, one little thing that I've started to do that makes the process easier for me. The most tedious thing is the cutting of only one, two, or four of a particular dimension. So I have started, especially with the white that I'm using, which is uh, usually fabric one and requires three, maybe even four different shapes, different dimensions, I've started looking at the pattern and seeing what is the widest that I'm going to need. And with my fabric double, I should say I cut a strip at that width. So in this case, this week, it was three and a quarter inches. So I have myself a strip three and a quarter inches from which I'm going to subcut another, my three and a quarter square, and then I'm going to trim it down for the two and three quarters, cut those, and then I needed the rectangles, which I cut. So I have some waste. I've created waste in my fabric, but I'm working with scraps and, uh, it just goes smoother for me. So that's for what it's worth. 
Another thing I do is, uh, well, in that process, of course, then I'm left with oftentimes a tail, you know, that is not large enough to wrap around the four by five piece of poster board that I keep my scraps on by color. You know, it's it's not going, uh, there's no way of securing it on that. It's, it won't stay. So these pieces, I don't throw away. If it has some kind of shape to it, other than a true scrap, that's just some little curlicue of something. I keep on my cutting table a shoe box and I drop it in here for those times that I am doing a crazy quilt type uh, placemat, mug mat, coasters, whatever it might be, I can just pull out from that box because they are not kept in any particular size, shape, or color. So that's just the way I do it and thought you might be interested. So that's it. See you with my laid out project. I just had to throw in a little, look what I've done. I chain pieced, just like Cindy does, just like the whole rest of the world does. But unlike what I usually do, I didn't make any mistakes. I normally get them, t at least one row turned around, going the wrong way. So I, unless I'm doing uh, long strips where I'm just chain piecing to end up with a large batch of fabric, I do not chain, chain piece. But after I took this to my machine, I thought, all right, it's time to grow up. And I did, as Cindy does, I pinned each one was able to sew in the correct direction on the first row. Of course, it was more critical as I progressed along, but that enabled me to, instead of starting at the top and going across as I normally do, I went down like you probably do all the time and I can see my points are looking very good. I'm now ready to sew each row together. Just had to stop to brag on myself a little bit. I guess this is a good learning tool, isn't it? So, on to the next. All right, all finished. All sewn together. Still proud of myself with my chain piecing. I did it and uh, I have, it was my last row that my points were just a little off, but you know what? If I can't see it to show you, I'm not going to worry about it. So, this is my star blossom. It does not measure exactly 10 and a half inches. It's a scant 10 and a half. To take it apart for that 16th to an eighth of an inch, I'm not going to do it. I'll see what I have to do at the end to make it work together. Uh, if I have to trim, well, some of them can't be trimmed down because then I'll lose their points. One problem at a time. I don't have a problem with this right now. It's going to stay as it is and go up on the board with all of its buddies. See you next week for number 10. We are getting closer to that finish line. See you then. Bye now.